This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show back like clockwork. Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end. Everywhere, bro. Everywhere. Seacrest the other morning. Gail King. Stand up. Gosh, man. How you doing, bro? Good, man. I met some, uh, I did a meet and greet at Atlantic City. I met a couple uh, people listening to the cast. Guy guy brought the, um, what you put in the t-shirt, that little note. Oh, he little, brought yeah. That little brown piece of paper. He brought that so I could sign it. Oh, and nice. uh, I'm telling you the cast listenership, they come up and they act as if it's a secret. You know, <laughs> they, they, they come up and first thing out of their mouth is listen to the cast. You know, so yeah, it's like, yeah, it's it, great. If if you if you don't know about it in the line, like they don't even want to like. They don't even want to say it out loud because they're afraid somebody else is going to hear and go, "What, what are they talking about?" Yeah. So. Good to see those people in Lost awesome. City. I got to, I got to tell you, bro. Sixteen shows in the last eleven days. I, wow. I, I'm tired. I bet. Oh my gosh, I, man. I'm tired, and uh, I gotta take a breather, bro. I mean, I just want to come home, relax. I was in the pool with my kids yesterday, and uh, here's something. And I don't know if Sadie has come across this uh, in Fredonia, but. We crank the pool heat up like it's bath water. Oh, yeah. And oh. yesterday, I didn't have the time to heat the pool, so it didn't get to where they're used to. Right. And uh, a poor kid, it's 87 degrees in the pool, right? Which oh. I think is a nice nice temperature. Right. We normally <clears throat> get this thing up to 94. Oh, man, yeah. it's beautiful. La- 94, we're, we're surging the power grid over here at the, uh, for, for pool heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're cracking this thing up, and my neighbors don't have lights. You know what I mean? Like, we, we just... <laughs> I hear you, bro. You need a windmill on your property just to heat your pool. <laughs> so, now, are you... I don't know. See, I can't get, I can't gauge temperature sometimes when someone says, oh, the water's da 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 and you go in, it's still cold. What I need to know is, is it is it at the warmth where... When I take my foot and I go from air to water, there's no temp change. Just I'm just wet, but still the same, like like room temp almost. This is you get in, and if you get out, you're cold. Like the, yeah, the, it's yeah. so it, it's warmer than the air. I know that. I know. See, my pool and my club is heated. It's a whole thing. I'll get into that with you too. I love a heated pool, bro. I love it. I mean, it's the only way to fly. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I agree. I agree. Growing up, though, never the pools weren't pools weren't heated. I mean, I I, I felt like I was swimming in Antarctica. Right? <laughs> I, I, I had hypothermia get, get doing uh, doing swim class every single time we ever got out of a pool. Oh, bro, swim class? It was you had to bob when you first got in. Remember that? You had to bob, and then when she would have you all up against the wall and she's talking to you, you just blew. You blew. And it's like, what, 7.15 in the morning? Right? <laughs> oh, I'm with you on that. But when we grew up, whenever we got out of a pool, too, I always had to put the blanket around me and, and, and like, do this until I dried off. Now, it's like these kids are jumping in and they're just staying in all day because it's heated. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. I, I I have seven minutes in the pool. That's the top until I start. I can't feel my extremities when I was a kid. Uh, now yeah. they're in there. It's like they're like hand me the soap. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> bro, did you ever go to Florida when you were a kid? Yeah. That that was the first time. I was like ten years old. And we went in a hotel pool, and I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, it's it's like pee. It's with me and my sister. Couldn't believe it. It was. The, I've never jumped in water and not froze my ass off. You got. You had to get. You had to mentally wrap your head around the jump. I'm with you. <laughs> so now a kid, uh, kids are growing up in a heated pool to dip a toe in an unheated pool. That, 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 that's like you said, Arctic. Yeah, then they went in yesterday, and they were like, ooh, it's kind of cold. Like, oh, it's 87 degrees in here. 
What do you mean cold? Cold is 71, 69. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so, yeah, we went in the pool yesterday. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm just trying to regroup here. I mean, it's just, it's just a lot of traveling back and forth, back and forth. I hear. took my kids, kids uh, took my kids to school today, picked up Caruso right before this. I gotta go pick up Serafina right after this. It's literally I come from from on off the road to a full blown Uber service. Yeah. It's unbelievable. With with all the shows you're doing and stuff, you come home and you're just another cog in the machine, bro. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Well, but really, what you, what, what, like, what's the reality, too? Like, Lon is going to look at you and go, well, I need you to pick up the kids normally, but you're really famous, so just sit here. I'll figure, <laughs> I'll figure something else out. You know? It's a funny thing, though, right? It's like you're up here, and you're doing a show, and everyone's having a good time, and then you come home, and it's like someone took a pin. And, Pah! <laughs> <laughs> Even do when I do a sellout show at a club, I feel that way. I can't imagine, you know. You're tired. You did so many shows that the vendors are tired. That worked your shows. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy doing the drinks as tennis elbow from tapping the keg with the thing. <laughs> That's when you know you did a lot of shows. When even the guy doing the food is like, yeah, let's let's wrap that up for that. <laughs> The ushers are like, hey, how many times are we going to walk down the aisle? <laughs> the ushers got Ben Gay in their lockers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of shows, bro. James Brown was looking down saying, pump the brakes. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 I'm working as if I got, I just got divorced and my wife took half. <laughs> 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 oh shit! That's it. The only other version is that, or you you found out your count, your accountant's been stealing from you for the past fifteen years. He's in jail, and it's all gone, and you got to regroup. Oh, that's great. That's so oh, great. God. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> wow. man. Oh man! You're, oh you're man! You're just trying to slip in a tour in between pandemics. <laughs> I'm trying to get it all in before they shut the shit down. <laughs> yeah. it's, they said kids got to wear masks. I already told Jackie I'm designing. I've been trying to design a way where my daughter looks like her mask is fine, but it's got mini holes in the whole thing. Like, <laughs> so she can actually breathe in school and maybe learn something. Bro, how much did school suck when you were a kid? And and then on top of that, they suffocate you, you know? <laughs> Oh, God. I picked up Caruso today. I took his mask off. In the mask, he's got his, the, you know, they eat a snack and they take the mask off, right? Yeah. So then they put the mask on. The poor kid, you know, still had, you know, it was yogurt parfait. And now it's inside the mask. The poor kid's walking around with yogurt parfait inside Jeez. his mask. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know? You know? I mean, literally, the only saving grace is you're looking at your son going, thank God he's not going to remember this. You know? <laughs> I mean, and, and my daughter's getting to the point where she will remember, so it's like, it's like, you ever hear, like, when old people used to tell us, they'd sound the siren and we'd all have to get under the desks, because I'm like, what the fuck are you, what? Desk? Like, weren't you under the desk going, how is this desk going to protect me from a bomb, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what our kids are going to say when they're 80. <laughs> we have to wear masks. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, believe me, that's, uh, hey, I don't know, maybe they'll be telling uh, when we're 80, I was, uh, you, you could say, Jesus, you think this is bad? <clears throat> well, no. <clears throat> Do you think when we're 80, they're going to be wearing full-blown um, hazmat suits to school? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, if that's the case, then Texas is going to be crowded, man. <laughs> My God, is it going to be crowded? Oh, it's man. It's nuts, dude. It's a nuts right there. So yesterday I did uh I, I co-hosted with Seacrest on Kelly and uh and Ryan Live, right? Yeah. But was you and Ryan? Just me and Ryan, and you know, we interviewed people and Billy Ray Cyrus played a song and we did a cooking segment with this guy, Anthony Scotto. Awesome. So uh I gotta tell you, Seacrest is class. 
Oh, classic. Oh, you can tell. Man. You can tell this guy. Like, he's got, the, I can't imagine his toiletries, right? I mean, his well, soap must be like 250 a bar. And this, <laughs> <laughs> we kind of go, went over his, his bedtime ritual. This guy's got a ritual. I didn't even know. He, I, go, I didn't even know he went to bed. <laughs> I thought you could tell you went over the ritual what he does when we all go to bed. <laughs> Shit. This guy, this guy's lighting incense sticks. He's got it's 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 a, it's a whole thing. He's drinking some potion before he goes to bed. Really? Yeah, he goes to bed early too. He goes to bed like eight thirty. You know, this guy gets up at like four and starts uh, his, his day. I, this guy's so busy. Yeah. We did a cooking segment on the show. Yeah. The food that we made on the cooking segment, he ate there as his lunch. Like he don't even got time for lunch. He's got to put a cooking segment in this in the show no. so he can eat. <laughs> oh my god! So what is he? If he has an exercise perf and all, does he does he do crunches too? <laughs> <laughs> so doesn't he like host a radio show right after that every day? Yeah, right after he goes like right from that show right to the radio show. He's still doing American Idol. This guy's got his, his hands in everything. My God. But what I wanted to mention is, you know when you do like um, Conan O'Brien or Kimmel or whatever, they give you like some swag, a, a bag with like a mug, a hat, sure. what have you? Yeah. I walk in and they got Casa Dragones, which is a tequila. Shit goes for about $300 a bottle. They gave me that, two bottles of it with an ice cube, you know, like one of those big ice cube uh, um, tray mold, molds yeah. and tray. Yeah, yeah. It makes the big And piece. a little like grapefruit to go along. I guess the grapefruit goes well with the tequila, a couple of grapefruits oh, yeah. and a beach ball and a bag. I'm like, yeah, this is that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You should put ten grand in the bag. <laughs> I might have to go through the pockets to see if he left any cash in his <laughs> side have, pocket. He might have. What? Now, by the way, does this guy shave like three times a day? I mean, you could. I mean, literally, you could. There's there's a reflection off his skin. That's how gleaming it is. I could do my hair in his cheekbone. You know what I'm saying? His skin is like the guy is. He, he had a he had a Corielli shadow going. Come on, he, uh, it don't look yeah. right on him, man. He's trying to. It don't look right. I, on him. I, I know he, he's he's got to go clean. I think that's yeah. that's the way we kind of know and love him. But great guy, solid dude. Seems um, like it. Seems like it, man. I mean, I it just seems like I, I uh, always. Everyone likes the guy. Every time anyone's on the show with him, they like him. You know, total pro. You know, I was a little not nervous, but I was like, "Yeah, I never hosted a show like this. You're reading yeah. cue cards, this and that." And but he took over. This guy was this guy was just great. And did, then uh, did you do, did you do any of the intros like our next guest? No, uh, I did, yeah, I did Billy Ray Cyrus. I intro I introed him. All right, uh, but I, the, you know, I asked a few questions to some of the guests. We played around in the beginning, and uh, and then that was that. I came home. And I got to tell you, we're, we got a special episode just as a teaser for the for the for the fans. Uh, next week we have an episode that's airing oh. that we did seven weeks ago when I was one of uh, the breakthrough cases for the COVID nineteen virus. I I got COVID. Uh, after I got the vaccine, I didn't want to come out and say I got it. You tell uh, it, just because I didn't want to, I didn't want to be, Hey, this guy, you know, I just didn't want to keep it on the DL, but we still did a cast did a while kid. I had COVID <laughs> and, uh, it was a and fun we, one. <laughs> yeah, we put it in the vault yeah. and now we're going <clears> to <throat> air that next week while Pete is on uh, vacation. But I wanted to touch on some, bro. I might be a long hauler. What does that mean? You know, like those people that get COVID and afterwards they have the effects for like months on end. Like, uh, is that why Gail King was rubbing your back in that photo? <laughs> no, uh -huh. she should have been rubbing my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought in that photo she was patting your back. I can't look right now. But so, why do you think you are a long hauler? You got you still you still can't I smell. Can't eat no food. I, I got all that. I got all that. All right. My legs 
like uh I feel like there's uh it feels like sciatica or bursitis where you get a shooting pain down your leg and then I got it uh, my feet hurt uh and I don't know if this is due to the fact that I had COVID or I'm 48. I mean, it could, it could, it could be. Well, you know. listen, you're 48 and you did 17 shows. I mean, you know. Yeah, that too. And then I got so kind of paranoid about it. I brought Ron from Naples out to Atlantic City to work on the legs and the, and the feet, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love about you, bro. You're making a big deal out of a $300 bottle of tequila. Then the next sentence, you're flying your massage guy out because you got a cramp in your leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Well, um, here's something I found out about Ron. Yeah. He's telling me that when he massages people... Like weekend warriors, people that generally don't get uh, uh, any body work done or are unhealthy, and let's say their neck hurts, their their leg hurts, what have you. The type of work he does is so intense that the person starts to smell up the room. Like I go from sweat, just the toxins oh. that come out of their body. When you start moving stuff around, it starts emanating from their pores and smells up the room. He goes, once I start smelling that smell, I tell the person, you know, we're done here. You know, I think, I think you've had enough for today. Because sometimes he says it can induce flu-like symptoms. People might walk out with a runny nose, dizzy, little headache, uh, the chills at night from getting this type of intense work done. I had 12 hours of work done within eight days. <laughs> he, he, this, this guy literally <laughs> massaged every part of my body and, and, and thoroughly, and I still got this pain. Now, I, did you ask him if you ever emanate this smell? Of course. I said, as long as you've been working on me. Did I ever start stinking up the room? And number two, what does it smell like? Yeah. Does it smell like a, like I farted the room? He goes, you've never had it, number one. And I can't describe the smell. It's like trying to describe what gingivitis smells like. You know, you, you, can't, yeah. you, can't, you can't put a, you can't put a, but he goes, it's a definite distinct smell yeah. of, of I've smelled toxicity. gingivitis. I smelled gingivitis on somebody. It's Yeah, but what, what does that smell like? I can't Can describe it's, it. It's, it's, own, it's its own thing. It's its own thing. <laughs> it's its own yeah. Thing. yeah. And it, it doesn't compare to anything, you know? Not even not even hovering me over an empty dumpster. <laughs> so what I want to know is if you have two rooms, ask your masseuse, and one room, nothing, and the other room you just detoxed a, a real smelly fucker. If we walk in both rooms, will we be able to go, oh, yeah, this is, it's B. It's room B. It's room B. <laughs> yeah. You'd be oh, able to tell. Oh, he probably, it's probably gets in, in his clothes and stuff. Poor guy. Wow. It's like, uh, it, it's, I, I compare it to a skunk, you know, just giving off a scent. And then you come out of there and you're like, hey, what the hell happened in here? That's it. You massage a skunk. He's going to leak a little of the stuff. <laughs> now, do you do you think the client knows they're smelling? Like, is the client like, oh, I asked, I asked them. No, they don't. Wow. So. Fascinating. And anyway, I don't know, man. I, I just, my heel hurts today. Something's wrong. What about that? Something. Though I thought you were doing that Rogan thing, the Cairo, the Frozen stuff, didn't you? I that? was pre pre pandemic. I was doing that. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I was watching Joe Rogan's Instagram. He's now he's uh, doing ice baths. This guy. Yeah. Have you seen? Have you seen this? No. Was it like what Watt did in that video? Yeah, similar. Uh, someone gifted him a uh, some company gifted him an ice bath. And he's like, you know, he's thanking the company, and and then he does an ice bath on, on Instagram, and he only lasts a minute and a half, and the next time he does it, he lasts twenty minutes, right? He he adapted this breathing technique where he could sit in ice for twenty minutes, which is a long time. I mean, yeah. he walked out of there, he couldn't even feel his legs. But here's my prediction. Now you're gonna see 
six to nine comedians go get this ice bath, right? Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> what Joe does is Joe, Joe, Joe will start to do something, right? Yeah. He'll get something, and then, and then the minions will follow, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to start to see people do it, trying to beat Joe, Ra- Joe Rogan's 20-minute <laughs> mark, right? <coughs> now, see, I always thought... I watch all these survival shows, and like you're in Alaska or something, and you got to get across a, a cold river, and he'll do stuff like um, I forget the guy's name, but he used to tie rope around him and have someone else with him, or else he'll build a fire so when he gets across, we can quick light it because we're going to go into hypothermia within 30 seconds. Your body starts to break down, you know. Meanwhile, then you cut to Joe Rogan, and he's playing Marco Polo in, in the goddamn thing. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know who I'm to believe, at, man. <laughs> well, I'm looking at Joe, and I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm waking up, and I got to tell you, me and my buddy were talking about this. I woke up today at about, I don't know, 4.30. I had to go take a piss. And the amount of volume, the the the, the knees, the cracking, the thing, my ass is tight, everything. I get out of bed, and you would have thought I played a, an NFL football game, the way my body feels. Uh, oh, like it's uh, Monday morning, and you're literally going to take a piss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, By the I way, you're you pissing, to... and your body's hurting at 4.30 in the morning. I just want you to know Seacrest has already been up a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Smelling incense. <laughs> <laughs> do you have these aches and pains um yeah yes and no you know what i mean like uh my my knee that shot really helped although the other day jackie wouldn't let me not do it i biked around the lake 42 miles me jackie and get this my 83 year old father-in-law in the lead, Jeez. biked around the lake, 43 miles, 42 miles. Unbelievable. Jeez. And then the knee was barking a little after that. But, uh, yeah, I guess I do. I mean, they come and go, you know. It's, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to try not to be one of those people, like, you know, when I hear other people. Not like this. This is funny. But, you know, I, I went through a streak recently with Jackie where I said something about, like, my knee. And then she goes, oh, it's your elbow, it's your knee, it's your... And I realized I was doing that, and I'm like, I don't want to be the boy who cried wolf. I'm going to yeah. suck it up, so... I don't want to be having a heart attack, and no one's calling 911 because <laughs> I'm always doing this shit, you know? <laughs> You're like, no, no, it's it's real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, oh, so what... God. I don't think that's COVID-related, though, man. Come on. Never had it before. Well, you, you know, you're getting older every day, right? I mean, I don't know. I know, but what? Shooting pain down my back and my legs? Come on. And then my, my heel starting to sting, and the bot, the arch of my foot is is sore? What the hell is that? Oh. Is that you? Yeah. yeah. Well, can't, so, can't you go to, like, who, who, like, who's doing LeBron? Who's keeping LeBron able to play the level he's playing at his age? I'm telling you, Ron is the guy. Oh, okay. He's the guy. All right. Uh, so if Ron can't get this beyond where you're at, then it, yeah. is what, it is what it is. Yeah, it's something else. It's not It's not in the muscles. This is something like nerve damage, something. I, 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 I'm going to give it another two weeks. All right, all right. But here's, here's the fear, right? Yeah. Let's say I waited two weeks. I go to the doctor, and he goes to me, how long has this been going on for? And I go, five weeks. And then he goes, and just now you're coming in? Like, if I went in tomorrow, can they save me? You know, I don't want to be the guy that waits too long for something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Well, maybe you go too soon, though. You're going now, and he's like, nah, it's probably just a pull. And then two weeks later, the tumor started developing. <laughs> oh, Jesus Bro, what? Christ. You can do it? You started it. But you went in too soon. <laughs> I mean, we kind of went down that path before. Uh, you know, I mean, when are you just going to hire a doctor so all you got to do is ring a bell and, <laughs> and he just comes up and gives you a physical every day? You should get a physical every day right after you work out. You don't think Stallone? Stallone's got to get two, three physicals a week. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think, bro? Seriously. Constantly monitoring the body. Yeah. I mean, he does swimming in the pool, does a few laps. For example... 
The other day, I was on our elliptical machine, and when I got off, I started doing some lifting, and I went like this to itch my chest, and my heart was beating really fast. So then I finished, I still worked out, but then that night I'm talking to Jackie, and I go, when you run and you're going far and stuff, is your heart beating really fast? And she's like, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. I go, because I felt my chest, and it was like really beating fast. And she goes, well, that's what you're doing. You're increasing your heart you don't think Stallone has moments like that where he works out, heart beating fast? He's not speed dialing somebody. He's got a doctor living in a bungalow on the property. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely on. Uh, and that's that guy's life. The guy, that doctor is either, you know, poolside, getting tanned, listening to music, or he's working on Stallone's foot. <laughs> Oh man, oh man. I think so, bro. So, I think so. Oh uh, Yeah, so, so it's just good to be back home and, and trying to get some R and R in here. What's up yeah. on your end? Well, I'll tell you, man, I was getting my camper. This is kinda like if you want to go there for a minute, how we do with the animal stuff sometimes, but I'm I'm on, I get my camper from my father in law's. Usually I put a giant tarp over it, but this winter, I, I'm like, let, let, let me let it air a little. I want to see if that makes a difference because it was some spiders in it. So I get it on my uh, front driveway. I always open it a week before I go, right? So I open it up. I get inside. I pull out one bed. Not a bug in there. I'm like, oh, this is nice. I was just about to call Sadie in to check it out. Then I open up the other one. Man, there is a crumb. It must have been from a muffin about the size of a quarter. And there must have been, bro, it seemed like thousands at Black Ants, just like it was a whole oh. colony. And it was right on the bed. And it was, and as I'm looking down at it, I, I feel something on my neck. <laughs> and it, and they were on the canopy and it <laughs> fell down. It was on my neck, a big black one. I'm like, oh my God, there's ants everywhere, right? So I grabbed the, the I grabbed the whole uh, bed and I just drag it out, and then and I look and underneath the bed on the wood platform it, that's that's like Rome. What I saw was like you know a little community outside. <laughs> Once you lift up the mattress, he has, it was fucking so many ants. It was Rome, bro. They had an entire colony that they probably been living there for a year, right? So. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm thinking, I mean, you know, I, you know, when something's so bad, you, you right away in your head, you start wondering about just selling and getting a new one. Like, like cause it, I'm like, what am I going to do? So I go and I get the shop vac from the uh, garage oh, and Jesus. I come back and I'm going to vacuum them. Right. And I, I start trying to vacuum a couple of them. I can't even get near the Rome area because it's too, it's, it's like I got to lean in and if, and they're still falling off the canopy. So, uh, so I put the whole thing down and I'm like, what? The? That's what I said. I'm like, fuck. And Jackie's in the kitchen with the screen open. She's like, what's the problem? And I go over the window. I go, Jack, there's ants everywhere. Sadie was upstairs. I didn't want her to hear because that's her, that's her bed. So I'm like, um, I don't know what to do. And, I, and Jackie goes, well, I got some ant killer stuff in here. And she's got this big machine, uh, big ant spray thing, but it's got an uh, automatic trigger. So when you press it, it just keeps going. Kish, 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 kish. Like, like, it's like an Uzi, bro. It's like an <laughs> Uzi for an ant gun. Kish, kish, kish. So, so now I go in there right now. I had vacuumed a little, so I got a few ants in there and they're alive in the, in the, in the vacuum container. And then I go in and it was awesome, bro. I just fired that thing everywhere. They're on the canopy, boom! And it's one of these sprays, as soon as it hits them, they just stop and die. <laughs> and I'm wiping them out, and then you see some of them running away from like the Rome area. And again, in my head, I'm like, does he think I'm getting away, I'm getting away? And then all of a sudden, like, I'm dying to know what they're thinking, you know? Cause I'm fucking wiping them out, right? And then finally, when they were all dead, and I'm talking, bro, probably the most ants in one place I've ever seen. It was horrifying, right? But it had to be done. Now they're all done, and now I do have to vacuum up all these dead ants. I was telling Jackie this later that night on the porch. She was laughing. So I go back, and I get the vacuum, and I open up the lid, and I see there's like, you know, maybe 100 ants alive scurrying around in there. And I was going to spray the stuff in there to kill them. But then I said, fuck it. And I put the top back on. 
and I vacuumed in all the dead ants. And as I was saying that, Jackie, I'm telling you, can you imagine what it must be like for an ant? You're in the vacuum and all of a sudden, all these dead ants start landing. You're, it's your aunt and your uncle and your sister, your whole family just dead, fucking va hundreds of them. Everyone you ever met just coming through a hole, dead, landing on. <laughs> right? I said to Jack, I was going to spray the ones in the vacuum and kill them. I go, but the shock of their entire family are dead on top of them. They, they, gonna, they must have died of horror. So now, do you think they think any of that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I just saw a quiet place too. You see those movies oh. where if you make noise, you die. Um, with John Kr Kr Krasansky and Emma Stone, you know, I think that's the name. Oh, Emma. No, no, no. no. Oh, yeah. If you make it. noise, these creatures come out and they kill you. And they just had the sequel, Quiet Place Two, come out. And, oh. and if you make a noise, like these creatures that are, came to Earth, they come and they kill you instantly. And I was saying to Jack, I go, it's the same thing that I was doing to the ants. They're doing to oh, us. Man. I don't know. Uh, good question, man. I don't know if they're looking at this going, holy Christ. Like, like, like it, let's say they were in there. And it, do, do they look at each other and go, I don't think anybody's coming back here for a while. Let's make a town. You know, like, oh, let's shit. set up shop. <laughs> yeah. right? And then, and then you come in, do they go like, what is this, ISIS? Like, uh, what, what are they coming through to? ISIS, <laughs> it's a god. It's, <laughs> right? It's like the end of the world. <laughs> I mean, ISIS to them would be like a moth, right? <laughs> <laughs> or a spider. That's like, oh, we got a spider in the community. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking. What do you call it? Yeah. Uh, this is the end of life. I forget there's a term <laughs> for. It. Yeah, this is end of days. From the, the, you're you're ripping apart the mattress. You're bringing in a vacuum. Do you think as they're alive and they're getting sucked in a vacuum? Do you think they're like, what in the fuck is that? You're like. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Or, or, or they, do they just go in the bag and go, all right, this is the next place we're walking around? Well, no, then they all land in the vacuum, right? And they reek, look, who's here? Tommy, Mike? Wait, by the way, do they, do they even have names? Right? I mean, are they going, anyone see Sally? Did she, make you? she was right behind me. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they they looked like they were trying to escape when I was firing Rome, you know. So they seemed like they got some sense, and then they land in the in the in the thing uh, in the vacuum, and then some time went by. So they must have been like, "All right, like you said, this is all right, guys. We can figure this out." Well, <laughs> wait, what's that noise? What's the, oh <laughs> shit, this dad, grandpa. <laughs> Fuck the ants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so we, we, it's amazing. We have the same problem. And always during the summer, we get ants in the house, particularly in the kitchen. Open up the cupboard today, and there's ants. I'm sorry. Ants in the house where you eat is, it just ruins it. Because oh, wow. I saw like five right away. Open up, I saw five, and I'm like, oh, God. Because you see like, like you were seeing, you see like the surface, yeah, almost like yeah, you, you see a couple kids playing at the at the playground, right? Yeah. But then, but then, like if you were to go, where's the apartment in, in, community? <laughs> <laughs> Where are all yeah. your relatives? The, <laughs> Where are they coming from? Yeah, where's the where's <laughs> Main Street? <laughs> So we start removing stuff, and we start seeing Main Street. And you're like, no. where does it end? No. You know, like, where, where is it coming? Where's the epicenter of this thing? Yeah, yeah it's scary. Man. Oh, it's, uh, it's awful. But I heard when you kill them, and we had this conversation when I had ants last year. You kill them, other ants sniff that out and come to take them away. So you actually attract more ants when you do this. However... Where it was on your father-in-law's property, they probably had a line going to the dirt somewhere. They probably right. set up indoor and outdoor. 
Yeah. Anyway. They, had, they had the best of both worlds over at your father's place. Now, now again, like, so then while they're there and they got that whole big thing, you look over and there's a couple on the curtain. Then there's one way over here on the wall. Are, are they like scouts looking for food? Like trappers could or be. something? Yeah, yeah it could be, could be like uh, soldiers looking to see what else is out there. You know, they probably go, listen, we got a beautiful muffin here that we're noshing on, but this shit ain't going to last for long. Tell Tommy and Frankie to take a look around and see if they can find any morsels of food, right? Right, right. yeah, exactly. This is like now we're trying to make uh, windmills and solar panels. <laughs> you got to keep moving forward or, the, or the, every, the society dies. Now, I got another... <laughs> I got another animal one for you. So I'm, yeah. I'm biking this lake. It's called Chautauqua Lake, not too far from me. It's a it's a real pretty lake to look at. It's uh you know not the cleanest lake sometimes from runoff water, but it's a beautiful lake and nice beautiful bike ride. And there are certain parts where you're going by these stunning homes on the lake, <clears throat> and then there's certain parts where you're going towards a couple of towns, uh, Jamestown in particular, seen better days. When we pass some homes that, like, I can't even tell you the level of squalor. You know what I mean? And, again, I get yeah. people that don't have money, but that don't mean you need to have a refrigerated door laying on the front lawn. All right? It don't, it don't cost <laughs> yeah, yeah. nothing to throw the fucking garbage out. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm literally more, I'll, I'll slow down on my bike to look at a shithole. More than I do for a mansion. Like, the, I, I, my jaw drops. I'm like, how do you not even go, let's, all right, let's clean this shit up today. <laughs> We're going to clean this shit up. Well, they, they always got these dogs that, like, if you, they get loose, they're going to murder somebody, you know? It's, like, <laughs> you know? it's never like, oh, look at that cute little guy. So, uh, no, it's, yeah, it's. So my question is, we passed this one, and it was like unbelievable, right? And there's this old woman, and a, and a, what must have been her daughter, and there's just garbage and toys and stuff, and they're sitting on this dirty porch. The house was falling down, stunning, just stunning, you know. Right next to a marshy swamp, and right between them, sitting on the porch, was a dog. With his chin down on the porch like dogs do, just laying on his belly. And he looked like a cute dog. But my question to you is, does the dog know it's a shithole? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you like to think if the dog was laying in your backyard, it would go, oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> And, and if you adopted that dog and brought it to your house and it laid at your house and looked the same as it did on that nasty porch, wouldn't you be like, are you fucking kidding me, dog? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> Nothing. I mean, <laughs> so what do you think? It's got, it, it's got to know. It's, it's got to know. It, I think it's a mood because maybe the mood in the house might not be as... Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they might be under, like, financial stress or there could be, you know, drug abuse. There could be a lot of things going on in the house. A lot of the dysfunction, dog, yeah. Yeah, it might be aping the behavior of the environment. You know what I'm saying? Where like, if they came over... <laughs> So mom yells at grandma, fuck you. You said you were going to bring home more barrels. Well, fuck you. You didn't get the beer. And then the dog starts going, <laughs> right? Like, this is what we're doing. We're all getting fucking crazy. Let's get crazy. Let's eat somebody. <laughs> I hear you, bro. Man, I like the way your mind thinks, bro. <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm just saying if he came to your house. It would be a little bit more of a pleasant experience, yeah. you and Jackie hanging out on the porch, drink, sipping on some beers. Yeah. You know, the kid's happy and you know, playing in the yard. And then the dog kind of goes, oh, all right, this is a nice environment, rather than going over there. And it's like, you come home and the guy's got a needle hanging out of his arm and the, and the dog's like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? All right. But now, what if Jackie and I lived in that shithole and we were out on that dumpy porch, but we were going, oh, good little doggy. Would the dog be like, ah, oh, this is so relaxing? Or would it be like, you're yeah, nice people, but this is your shithole. We need to we need to get out of here. I, I, th I think I think it'd be the second one. This is a nice environment, but there's fucking garbage all over the kitchen. 
<laughs> I just pissed on the couch and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man God, so man, funny man. bro oh, what the oh. fuck um, so I, I mentioned last week we touched on it a little bit uh, Tuesday's therapy day for me right oh yeah that's right yeah 4 30 I do my call I kind of like throw up my uh my issues for the week and it's nice it's like um this isn't something where he's like what happened to you when you were small? And then you go, oh, well, you know, my dad never paid attention. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, I'm trying to balance work and home life, and this is the, the issues I've been going through. So I got to tell you, man, she's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm always thinking. In my mind, there's a voice in my mind, and throughout the day, it's talking to me, right? Yeah. Like, I, I'm never, like, empty-headed. I'm, like, I'm in the car, and I'm thinking, hey, I got to go Thursday, I got to go there, Friday, yeah. I got back, and uh, what am I going to eat tonight? Oh, yeah, I got a pack. Oh, yeah, that toothpaste that, that I got. The, it, it's, it's all in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, should I buy this? Should I buy that? She goes, oh, you have a gremlin. I said, what? I go, what? what's a gremlin? She goes, you have a little gremlin, and your gremlin's talking to you. I said, I said, you, you know I'm using this on some way, shape, or form on like a, a podcast. Or, I go, you know, <laughs> this... <laughs> this ain't private, right? You, she goes, use it. I don't care. Use it. We're going to do an exercise. I'm going to be your gremlin. And I'm going to tell you stuff. And I want you to react to your gremlin in real time. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> So, like, she's talking to me as the gremlin. She's like, you know, you don't deserve this, you know, this and that. And I go, you know, I would say, yes, I do. I work my ass off. Yes, I do deserve this or whatever. And I literally, I, I literally put the fucking gremlin in place. <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> so the gremlin, by the way, is saying things that one side of your brain that you sometimes feel. And your your gre yeah your gremlin's your inner dialogue that you're having, oh, and okay. your gremlin is always pretty much negative. You know, uh, like you don't deserve this, or why are you doing that, or what have you. It's just always kind of like it's like a, it's almost like a little devil uh -huh, speaking to uh -huh. you, and you kind of you kind of listen to that. You know, sometimes you listen. Yeah, maybe I don't don't mm. deserve this, or yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that, or or whatever. Right. But the exercise was just to get it out in the nice. open and, yeah. just, and just and just talk it out. Now, as, as as strange as that might sound to people who are listening, right? And I know you got the naysayers out there. There's a there's a contingency of the population, and I was one of them. You go to a therapist, a life coach, whatever, whatever, someone outside your family to kind of talk things out. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, it's uh, it's got a negative connotation, especially where you come from, where I come from. What are you weak? Yeah. What are you pussy? You know, you, you get that type of yeah. mentality there. <laughs> Maybe you're thinking this. No, <laughs> but I am laughing at how you're like you start out going. She's not asking me about my childhood or nothing like that. I have a gremlin. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a gremlin exorcism. Oh, you you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> we're bringing out my inner gremlin. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for me, it's been it's been helping me leaps and bounds because it just even if it doesn't resolve itself, it just gets talked about. Yeah. Rather than me holding that all in totally and walking and walking around with it yeah right? man I, I, I the best way i can equate it is sometimes like with jackie uh, something i'll feel weird about something and i'll say to her or something and she'll go okay hey, it looks like that let it go and uh 
and you know, you just need somebody that you know does that all the time for all the st- stuff, right? To someone that just makes you feel like you can. You, you, she's trying to teach you to say that to yourself, right? No, it's 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 saying it to somebody who doesn't have a stake in the game. Oh yeah. If you said it to your wife, your wife's gonna go, hey, "Come on, people, forget it." Right. You tell you tell you tell your mother, and, and she maybe she goes, "Mm-hmm," or whatever. Right, it is. right, right. Yeah. Uh, and and then you're stuck with it in your head again because you didn't really get any feedback or no one kind of told you how to work that out. Right. Uh, you know, it's 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 more that for me than anything else. Anyway, I've been yeah, doing this for cool. se- six, seven weeks. It's every Tuesday at 4.30. I get on the phone for a half an hour. We bang it out. And again, some of it's just, it's unresolved, but I, I just throw it out there. And... Uh, and we're doing date night Tuesday nights, right? So I come out of I come out of therapy, and Lana loves it because when I come out of this thing, I just feel like I let a like I, I I the weight of the world's been lifted off my shoulder because I've been walking around with this shit all week, right. and now I throw it up. Right. It's like a it's like when you're when you drink drank a lot. And you're walking around, and, you're, and you got a headache, you're dizzy, you're sweating, and then you go throw up, and you're like, oh, man, I feel a lot better. Yeah. That's what I equate this experience to. So when we go out on Tuesday night, I'm like, you know, I'm like clear, clear-headed, clear right? That's it. So I, th- I tell Lana, I go, you got to do this now. Like, I feel like I'm working here. Like, I'm working on me. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, you got you got work on you, right? Right. Wow. <laughs> so she goes, should I start talking to this lady? <clears throat> now, I feel like you can't use my lady because she knows about what I've been saying. Right. And then if Lana start using her, you know, then she's gonna start putting stuff there. You got to get your own. Lady, I, I you know? agree. I agree because if, if she may have something that she'd want Lana to do, but in her head, your doctor's like, mm, you know what though? That's going to affect his gre- gremlin. <laughs> I don't want to. F- <laughs> so yeah, so she's got. I don't do want it. her fucking with his gremlin. <laughs> yeah. So by the way, so on date night, uh, you're gremlin free. Is that what we're saying? The gremlins at home. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, the gremlin. Right. The, I tell you what, I put the uh, the gremlin don't come out mm-hmm. because the gremlin, the gremlin's in his uh, in his cage or whatever. Can, can we, and she's co- yeah. she, she's cool. I mean, she don't care. I go this this gremlin thing because I'm the type of guy I do therapy and I'll, I'll 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 talk to my mom about it. I talk to Lana about it. What we talk about? There's no. It's not even like private. <laughs> it's it, there's nothing private about it. It's yeah. like I was therapy. <laughs> hey, well, we talked about you know I'm having <laughs> trouble. You know where I come from and where I'm at now, and how do yeah. I how do I like balance all that stuff yeah. and different lifestyle? My kids are growing up in a different uh, socioeconomic environment, and I'm trying to instill you know the whole thing. It's all out in the open. Right. It's just yeah. now I got someone to like focus this shit on once a week. Nothing private about it. Some people like I do in the therapy don't even tell nobody, and it's like a secret, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I notice when I tell people <laughs> I'm in. Th- <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <dude. laughs> I tell people I'm in therapy. People tell me they're in therapy too. It's like it's um, like they needed me to say something right. in order for them to tell me, oh yeah, yeah. me too. Uh-huh. I do mine on Wednesday. You know, it's like oh, <laughs> dude. oh wow, dude. So does she give you advice though, or does she just like uh, the thing I always think about with therapy is like I'm like so I don't know if I should uh, go on that vacation or if I should do this thing instead, and then uh, is it, if the lady's gonna go, well, how are you feeling about? How does it feel if you went? And I'm like, lady, I need to know: do I go on the vacation or do I not? I need someone to yeah. run my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one example on how this works. I'm I'm like, I'm bogged down. You know, I got shows. I got press I'm doing. I'm getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm doing a radio tour between 6 and 9 o'clock. I'm picking up my kids. I'm dropping them off. And I'm, you know, I, I'm a play date and I'm meeting parents and the school and what, what have you. You know, it's a lot to manage. And then she will say something like, well, you have a choice of whether or not you want to do those things. You don't have to do everything, you know? When they call you and go, do you, do you wanna do press for uh, 
this uh, local paper in Pittsburgh. Normally, I would just go, yeah, put it on, a, you know, put it on. A, yeah. You have a choice going, hey, I don't want to do that. And that's, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That's, a, that, that's okay not to go pick up your daughter and have your wife do it because you didn't get enough sleep. That's that. You have choices. So that's the type of, if you want to call it advice. Yeah. It's more, it's, it's not like, hey, you're having a problem with, um, uh, L- Lana spent too much money la- last night or uh, on a dress or whatever. And I got upset about it. It's not like, well, go tell Lana that, that, that it's not, it's not that type of advice. Right. It's, it's more of, well, you know, let's see what, you know, let's see what we could do here. And I'm just making this up. That wasn't yeah, even a totally understand. That, hypothetical. Yeah. Yeah. It's hypothetical. Like, and, and we'll talk it out more than like, she's telling me what to do. Right. And then by the end, of I'm, that, com- so- I'm coming to my own conclusions. And, and, and sometimes I would imagine after all that, you're like, oh yeah, I'm not even mad about that. I don't even know why. Like, it's almost like you're probably, I don't know, learning stuff about yourself along the way. Yeah. Yeah. You're discovering. Yeah. Discovering like, oh, that's, you know, for me, it's, I'm discovering what's important, what's not important. Uh, how to, and then I started doing this thing. You got to go on. And again, I was not a believer in this either, but as my gremlin is speaking in my head to clear my head, I started doing this meditation on Netflix. I think it's called headspace. Really? It's a, it's a seven episode series where they take you through exercises of meditation and to quell the brain of all your thoughts I mean, are you walking around with thoughts every day? Yeah. I mean, I are you mean, talking? Not are only you do talking I, to your... I'm all day long got thoughts about this, that, and the other thing to the point where even when I go to bed, as I'm getting ready for bed, I go to myself, oh, when I lay in bed, I'll think about that thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. Like I have a, I, I have a to-do think list when I get into bed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so I got to tell you, doing this headspace exercise, you just lay down, whatever, and you do this breathing, right? You mm-hmm. just concentrate on the breathing. Now, the mind's going to wander. As you're breathing, the mind's going to go, I wonder what I'm going to have for breakfast tomorrow. Uh, I got to take uh, Serafina, and then I got to drop off the dry cleaning, and then I got to come back, and then I got to do that interview, and then I got to tell, uh, you know, Lana that we got to sit down and talk about if we're going to go on a ski trip. And decide. This is all going through my head. Now, that causes a lot of stress sometimes, depending on what you're thinking about. Doesn't um, uh, make you available to be in the moment. So the meditation is supposed to kind of just clear your mind and relax you. And I got to tell you, episode one, I did it in bed, breathing, breathing, breathing. I woke up and I had a, and, and again, it doesn't happen over one it's like working out. Right. You got to do this over a long period of time to see results. Right. Is that you? Yeah, that's not that. uh, But just one session doing it, I felt a lot more at ease than I did before I went to bed. Like before, like I'm like you. For I'm in bed and I'm thinking like, I'm like, I got so many thoughts going through my head. How am I going to fall asleep? <laughs> right. <laughs> I got to think about that thing. Then when I'm done thinking about that, I got to say that. Well, I mean, is that yeah. like Tom Cruise? They say this guy, when you meet him and talk to him, he's like in the moment. Like he could be talking to anybody and he's like totally into what you're saying. So, you know, he's not even thinking about other stuff in his life. And and I guess that's like what you're trying to get to this Zen place where wherever you are and whatever you're doing is all that is important in that moment. Like sort of. Thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, could you imagine talking to somebody like that where you're talking to people, right? How yeah. many times are you talking to people or you're listening to someone where you, you're thinking about nine different things at once while they're even talking. Oh. You're, not, you're not even paying attention to what they're saying. The only, right? yeah, sometimes the only times like if I ever get really baked and then I meet somebody, I'm almost like Tom Cruise because I'm so stoned. I'm like, wow, you teach? What's that like? Fifth grade? <laughs> like, well, you know? And they're like, dude, this guy's so into what I'm saying. And I'm like, not really. I'm just baked. You know? So so anything is interesting in that moment. But that's how people live their life, not the baked part. Yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're like that all day. You know, in the morning you meet them at breakfast. Boom, they're locked and loaded on you. Isn't Seacrest like that? Seacrest had that with me. Yeah. 
Yeah. He was like asking questions. He's like, okay, so you're going on tour. So well, tell me about tour. Like, how, how does that work? Do you do you, do you uh, do the same stuff every night, or do you switch it up? And does the the act evolve? Like he was in it, you yeah. know, like in it. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes when I'm talking to people, I'm in it, but then I'm like, sometimes I'm looking at him going, yeah, it, it could be anything. It, this guy look better with a goatee or a beard. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Whatever. I know. I hear you, man. You just so, you mind wanders. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's my new journey uh, that I'm on with uh, with the with the therapy and the meditation. It's just been a, uh, it's been difficult to sit down, quiet, and just relax a little bit. That's what I'm trying to do this year. Relax. Uh enjoy more of the journey than always thinking about what's next that's you know i mean the, the things you've accomplished are amazing i mean does your gremlin have a name <laughs> <laughs> can we have people leave messages with possible names for the gremlin that's the most important thing is you and your gremlin need to get on the same sleeping pattern. So when you're <laughs> yes. trying to sleep, he's not leaning over going, sleeping? You think this isn't going to go away? This is going to go away. Get the fuck up. This is going to go away. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Stop beating yourself up, bro. You worked your ass off. You took a lot of no. risks in life. I know, I know. You know? I'm just, you know, it's, just, know. it's just been uh, my whole life I've been thinking. You know what I'm saying? Man. So I just want to like get to a place where I'm a little bit more relaxed and enjoying, you know. And that'll be nice on. for everybody in your life too, because oh, like, I gotta I'm, tell you, it takes me an but, extra twenty minutes to dress when I'm gonna see you. <laughs> and I think everybody could say that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, God! So so you're you're going. You never really finished the story with the camper. Are we keeping it or are we burning this thing? No, I got it. I got them all cleaned out. Then I scrubbed the thing out. She's ready to go. Um, and like Sebastian said, next the next week's show about uh, when he had <clears throat> the virus there for and quarantine. It's funny. It was a fun show, man. It was a fun show. So I think they'll really yeah, dig that, we, man. We had, a, we had a good time. So when are you leaving? Uh, I'm not leaving till next. Well, this show is Saturday. I'm leaving Monday. <clears throat> I'll be gone. Bro, I'm going, each time I go, I go longer and longer. I'm going to be in the woods for uh, 12 days and then wrap it up with the three days in a resort on a lake. So nice. the thing with the lake, though, resort, uh, I don't know how they're going to feel about me pulling into that parking lot with a camper. You know, we'll, we'll see. They take the dog. I know that, but I don't know about the camper, but I don't know where to put it. Well, I mean, I'm sure they got a parking spot for it or you could un unhitch it in the parking lot. No, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I can't back well, that thing up for the life of me, dude. Even when I got to my house, Jackie and I got in a huge fight. We couldn't back it up, so I have to. I had to unhitch it in my neighbor's driveway and walk it across the street to back it in. I can. I got to get better on that. Yeah, no, that's 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 a guy move to to move a trailer in a in a yard backwards. That's that's a total man. Yeah, I can't. But I'm looking you forward to it and. uh you know, I'm gonna bring the equipment. Maybe we can, I can do. I don't know. Whatever. No, do, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe before you leave, and uh, depending on time, maybe Thursday, we um, do one for the for the can. All right, love we, to. We put it. We put it in there. We got. Uh, I gotta go pick up my daughter. All right, dude. Um, good hanging as always, and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go find out what my gremlin's doing later on tonight. <laughs> go ahead. Right, guys just a few show announcements september 2nd through the 5th uh just announced i'll be going to the toledo funny bone looking forward to starting it all off there and then i go to portland october 2nd dallas october 9th bananas out in jersey on the 15th through the 16th syracuse rochester charlotte november 6th Cleveland, November 11th. I know some of you have been emailing. I thought the tickets were already on sale. Uh, they should be going on sale soon, but I guess like save the date, like a wedding. I'm definitely coming November 11th. I mean, November 20th, the Hannah Theater in Cleveland. Can I keep getting my background music? Got my daughter, DJ Hank did background music last week. It was all right. I'd rather have my daughter do it. Um, 
Boston, December 12th through the 4th. And then Minneapolis just went on sale December 11th, the cultural Cedar Cultural Center in Minneapolis. Get your tickets at pcorielli.com. The links are there. You click on, it takes you to where you got to go. I hope to see you guys at all these shows, man. Thanks again for all the support. Nice playing, kid. Eight. You want to promote any of your shows or you don't even Yeah, let's 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 promote here. It is what? Friday, Saturday. Tickets are on sale right now. We just added a new show in Chicago at the United Center on December 12th, I believe, Sunday at 5 p.m. Nice. Bears aren't playing. And then we are doing a show, I believe, December 29th in Brooklyn, Barclays Center. That is up for sale. Uh, SebastianLive.com. Awesome, dude. The whole arena tour is there. Tampa, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, Boston. It's all there. Wilkes Bar, Pittsburgh. Go to SebastianLive.com to get your tickets. And uh, check me out. August 12th, Discovery Plus. Well done premieres. All right. Uh, I can't wait to see 13 episodes it. of Well Done. We're opening up with the fishing episode where I get sick and I do the whole show or half of the show from the deck of the boat. And uh, that day I'll be uh, hosting Kelly and Ryan with Ryan Seacrest. I just uh, shot it yesterday, but it will air August 12th. So check that out as well. And nice. that's it. We uh, will see you guys next week. Pete and I might get together to do a cast. If we don't, you will hear a, a new archived COVID cast. <laughs> nice hanging, bro. Nice hanging. All right. All Take right, care. man. Later. Later.